Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just uh, browsing the seed collection because it's uh, National Garden Meditation Day. Um, well, welcome to Camp Shalom. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be demonstrating how to plant the garden. My name is uh, Ben. I worked at camp as the nature and fishing specialist for three years and then a year as well as the word working specialist. Um, I was a CIT here and also participated on the JCC board as a team member. So I'll bring you over to the garden and uh, show you what we got going on. So the tools I'll be using today are a trowel, a steel rake, a pitchfork, a scuffle hole, a rototiller, and a shovel. The essential items that you can get by with are a pitchfork, a steel rake, and a trowel if you don't have the other items. The other things that you need once the plants are in are a tomato basket stake or a wooden stake. You might also need a hammer to put them in. Then once the plants are in, you can also use a gardening hose or a watering can. So this is a garden we have left over at camp from last year. And uh, we need to rip up all the dead stuff to uh, get the new stuff in. So all you really have to do is pull it out, maybe save it for the compost pile, rip it out, and then rake everything away. I'm only doing a little bit here for the sake of time, but this is generally what you would do the whole way down. As you can see, we already did this area. So once you get your garden beds cleaned out, now's a good time to use your rototiller or your pitchfork. In this case, I'm gonna use the rototiller. <laughs> Safety glasses. Once you have nice and loose dirt, you can grab your steel rake and start to turn it into a little bed. It's a very good idea to turn it into little beds because it gives your plants an ideal, ideal soil condition to grow in. So what I'm doing is raking the dirt into a one foot by two foot wide hump and then I'm, it's about uh, 8 to 10 inches tall and what this does is gives the plants a nice loose soil for them to root through. Now, if you don't have a rototiller, you can always use a pitchfork. The same concept, just a little more work. And what you're doing is just flipping over the soil, adding air pockets back into it, allowing the roots to move freely. Doesn't take much. And then you take your rake and do the same thing that we did right over there. Make a one to two foot wide bed here, about eight to 10 inches up. we 
have a great area for planting. So what we have here is some herbs left over from last year. So all I'm gonna do is just clear them out with my hand. Um, you don't really wanna take a rake to them because that could damage their whole root system and everything, so. What kind of herbs do we have? So what we have left over from last year is chives, oregano, and parsley. Um, chives are in the onion family. You can eat them raw or, you know, they're good on the grill for 10 seconds and then they're nice and crispy. With oregano, this you can let dry out or you can put it fresh on your pizza. And of course, parsley, our favorite bitter herb. <laughs> the first thing that we're going to plant is carrots. Um, because the seeds are so fine, I don't like using gloves. So what I do to stop the dirt from getting under my nails is take a bar of soap and just kind of scratch it. And what that does is lodge the soap under your nails and then you can wash it right out after. All right. So planting carrots is a little bit unusual compared to your regular seeds such as a pea. Um, for this, what I like to do is go in the center of the garden bed, just with my rake and so, and kind of hammer down a little spot. It ends up being about half an inch to two inches deep, depending on the area. And then it gives you a little gully there. And, With the carrot seeds, you can see they're super small. So what I like to do is kind of sprinkle them in, just like that. Almost like you're putting salt on something. And you just go over. And make sure, you know, decent coverage. Um, with carrot seeds, a lot of them are already uh, dried up and pretty much dead in the package. So you're going to have a bunch lined up there. And then put the remaining back in the pack. And then you can just take a rake and gently brush everything up. As so, give it a little tap. And in about a week or week and a half, you're gonna see little green stems popping up. And you're gonna let them grow, they're gonna clump together. And after about three or four weeks, that's when you start to weed out about every two inches. And that will enable the carrots to grow to their fullest potential. How often should you water it? For watering of your plants, I recommend every day to every two days, depending on if it rained or not. You don't want to overwater. Um, it's actually better to underwater because then the roots are forced to dive deep to try to find water so you get a more sustainable and beefier plant. <coughs> Okay. Now when planting peas, it's a little bit more basic. Instead of doing the whole trench and sprinkle system, these are each gonna have their own individual hole to go in. What I like to do is make a little indent about one to two inches deep with the trowel. And then all you gotta do is kind of flip the trowel and mark it. And then you go again and keep doing that. And that gives you about an eight to 10 inch region which gives the plant plenty of room to grow. Now anything in the pea and bean family, they do like to vine, so you have to be weary that they don't attack each other. Um, they might grab onto each other and pull each other down, but all you can do is just pull it off. It's easy to manage. So with these, do you want to come a little closer? You just drop them in.
just as so. Now the peas comp compared to the carrots have more of a 95% germination rate while the carrots are probably on the 50 to 60. That's why you can put each one in the individual hole and they'll most likely sprout. And the same thing, you just go along with the rake, fill them in nice. Very nice. Tap them down so the water doesn't wash them away. That's so. And within a week and a half to two weeks, you'll see these guys sprouting up. Um, no need to pull any of them out. Uh, they have their own room to grow and all you really got to do is manage the weeds that come in around them. And then within 60 to 75 days, you should be having peas growing on your plant. So just like the other garden beds, I'm just mixing this dirt up here, getting it ready for the tomatoes. Always remember to keep your tools facing down or else they could flick up and hit you. So, only gonna plant a couple here for, oh, you're not even recording? Oh yeah. We're just gonna plant a few here for demonstration purposes. But I like to plant them 18. What are those? Well, these are tomatoes. And I like to plant them 18 to 24 inches apart, um, depending on the type. These are super sweet 100s, which are your little ch uh, cherry tomatoes. Um, they're one of my favorite. You don't have to really mix them into the salad or anything. You can just go right out to your garden and eat them. So for this, you just dig a little hole. Make sure you place that dirt right to the side. You're gonna need it. And then this one, depending on your trowel, is about two trowel lengths. That's gonna go right there. So we'll plant a couple. <clears throat> can usually just push these up from the bottom and they should come out. I also like to leave the label on hand so I know what I have in my garden. And you just mush it around. Make sure you press it in or else they could fall over. And then I also like to leave a little divot there just so when you water them, the water stays within them and doesn't run off. And I'll do the same thing right here. So now when these get about a foot or two big, you can put a stake in them. There's different options, your typical wooden stake or your tomato basket stake. Uh, whichever you have, you could use a stick from the woods. So this one is quite easy. Just make sure it's straight down and push it in. And this will grow up and as it start just starts to branch out, you kind of just funnel it uh, within the basket here. Now with the stake, you'll need a hammer. And you can just hammer it as close to the plant without touching its initial uh, potting root ball there. So you don't damage its existing root system. And you just hammer that in. And as that grows, you can either use uh, twine or zip ties. They also make uh, ties specifically for plants. They can just wrap that stem um, as it grows. And of course, if your plants are gonna get bigger than two feet, you can get a four foot stake, you can get a five foot stake. Um, just make sure you read the label on your plant there. And I leave that there so I know what I planted. Alright, the cucumbers 
when they grow, they like to spread out. So try to keep cucumbers, zucchini, squash, if you do watermelons, if you do pumpkins, um, at least two to three feet away from your existing plants because they like to spread out, they have broad leaves and they like to vine and twine and tangle anything they can grab. So I'm just gonna mix the dirt up here. Is it important to keep your plantings in rows? So I recommend rows because it is easier to track what you have. It's easier to know what is a weed or what's the plant, especially when they're initially growing. Um, it also is the most space, space efficient. So, How far apart should your rows be? I like to keep the rows themselves about 10 inches to a foot and a half just to walk through. Um, but the plants themselves, depending on the spe species, uh, if I'm transferring from tomatoes over to a squash zucchini or a low growing vining plant, I like to have at least two to three feet between those. Um, you can minimize this area by putting a fence directly next to the plant and training it to grow. So if I had the cucumber or the squash here, well not necessarily squash, but I have the cucumber here and it starts to grow, I can start to train those vines to grow up the fence. Can you talk a little bit about where to plant things the following year and if you should plant them in the same spaces that you did the year before? So depending on your garden size, it is not that big of a deal to replant in the same spots. What is essential, essential is that you have the same amount of nutrients in that location that you did before. And a good um, thing to do is mend your soil with additives throughout the year, um, such as cow manure or compost, leftovers from your house, leaves. Um, they also make chemical additives, which I don't like to use, that they sell at stores, but really uh, enriches your soil with nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, which are the key nutrients that they want. Um, and if you mix all your dirt together, kind of like what I'm doing here, uh, you don't really have to switch the location of your plants. You can play around with them. Say I had my tomatoes growing here, um, but the sun's coming from there. That's gonna shade out cucumbers if I had them growing here. So what I would wanna do is have my low growing cucumbers or squash growing facing towards the sun, which is southeast, southwest, um, and then have the tomatoes in the farther back. And just to clarify, the dirt that we are using, it's just regular dirt? So this is pre-existing dirt from the ground. Um, who knows how long it's been here. There used to be grass here, but the grass was overturned and rototilled back into the soil. Um, and if you are starting a new garden, uh, you can always have, grind up the existing grass, and that is also good nutrients for the soil um, further down the road. But really, uh, most soils will do, unless your soil is very sandy or very clay-like. And you can actually tell if you grab a ball of it and hold it like this, how it kind of molds and breaks off. Now that's good soil. If it was clay-like, you would almost get, well, something like you're playing with clay and you would get this little rope forming that came about here and then it would break up. If it was too sandy, I wouldn't even be able to get that compression there. So this is good. So it is not essential to buy store-bought soil? It's is not essential to buy that light store-bought potting soil. If you do not think you have good nutrients in your garden already, you can go to a local, local garden supply store 
and they sell bags of screen topsoil or leaf compost. Um, that's the cheapest way to do it. It's about three to six dollars a bag compared to a sixteen dollar bag of potting soil um, which you would use for either indoor plants or uh, plant plants you put in pots that are on your uh, porch or something. That's just light water absorbing soil. Um, but this stuff is what has all the nutrients that help produce the best vegetable yield. So I got that nice. Now with the cucumbers, like I said before, they like to grow wide. So you kind of got to imagine a circle here. And that's essentially how much space you're going to need. Plus, when you come over to plant your next one, it's also going to circle here. So we'll plant one there. We'll plant one there. Just as so. And once again, this is about a 10 inch to 12 inch trowel. Um, so these, you just can squeeze the bottom. If they're a little loose, you can pop them right out and place them. You can see the roots are coming in already. Um, as so. And you might notice a little bit of wilting when you initially plant them. And that is completely normal. Uh, transplanting does cause stress on the plants themselves, but within a few days, they will be back like this, as long as you water them. Same thing here. Squeeze the bottom. Yeah. And make sure you have that little divot there so water then will stay in the root zone. And then mark it so you know what it is. And that's that. So within the first couple weeks of uh, tilling your garden and planting your plants, you're gonna notice a lot of weeds. Um, this is because you're disturbing the soil and bringing all those seeds from the bottom back up to the top. So you're probably gonna get pretty stressed out with the amount of weeds you have the first couple of weeks of gardening. Um, one of the best ways to mitigate this problem is to just take old recycled newspaper and you can just lay it right down the pathway and that will keep all the weeds out of that row. And then you can just keep going. I only have one piece, so I'm only using one piece. And to keep it there, make sure you just uh, water it in and once it dries up, it will stay there. Should you put dirt on top of it? I don't put dirt on top of it because that allows weeds to then grow on top. Even in a half inch or quarter inch, certain weeds are still able to grow. So the water, if you pour water on it, it'll hold it down. The water holds it in place. Um, the combined moisture of the newspaper and the moisture of the soil beneath will lock it down. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is if you don't have a vast garden, like Camp Shalom does here, then you can do something small yet productive, which is planting in a pot or a bucket, um, whatever you have available. It's very convenient, very easy to do, very easy to maintain. So, Make sure your bucket has holes in it. This one does not, but it's only for demonstration purposes. So what you're gonna do is get a good amount of soil. This is already being mixed up as I dig it up, so no need for using rototilled soil or anything. And you can fill it to your preference, depending on the pot size and the decoration. I usually fill it about two inches below. Um, that leaves room if I want to put like mulch or anything down. Um, it also helps hold the water in because uh, it shades the sides. So just pick out, that's what it should look like. You just pick out anything in there. And there is a concept I like to follow that's similar if you are uh, planting flowers in a pot. And the concept is called thrillers, fillers, and spillers. So that means the biggest thing 
that's gonna grow straight is going in the middle and then fillers would be the area that you have beneath that tall plant that fills in the space and then the spillers is what falls over the pot and really gives it a nice look so what I'm gonna plant here in the middle just take a chunk of dirt out is a tomato same one we planted over there and I'm just gonna drop that right in pack it down a bit and that will grow straight up what you can do as it grows is start to eliminate these bottom leaves about eight to ten inches up what this also does is it takes away those leaves and allows the plant to put more energy towards the leaves that are actually receiving sunlight and the and the uh, buds that are actually going to produce your uh, fruit and then I only have one cucumber left but per se if you're here you can see in there you just take a chunk of dirt out of the side and what you're gonna do is you can put that cucumber right in there and let it go if I had another one I could put it on the other side so now what this is gonna look like is I would then put one of these tomato steak baskets within it and this tomato is gonna funnel up through the center and then as these cucumbers grow the weight of the leaves and their vining uh, tendency is gonna fall over the sides if you put one on the other side it would fall over the sides here and uh, what you're actually gonna notice is you'll start to get tomato uh, fruit up here and then cucumbers that are gonna actually start to form down here um, even if it's on like a deck or a porch uh, you might even see cucumbers growing directly on the concrete or the wood um, if that starts to happen uh, just make sure that that concrete is not super hot or it could damage the fruit so what I like to do is then just put a little piece of wood under you could put a little piece you could put anything under there you know if there's a cucumber growing just put a shovel under so if you're kind of like me I've always had a rabbit problem uh, within my garden here they have a fence but still uh, chipmunks and small animals can still get through and eat the plant and eat the seeds um, there's specific plants that they like they like the early season crops such as carrots they like the peas when they start to sprout and they like the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts and uh, all those type of things. So a simple trick is to take a real fork or a plastic fork and you kind of just put them right where your seeds are going to go. I don't have any forks so I'm going to demonstrate with spoons but I would use a fork and you kind of just, you know, make a little wall and if these were forks this is a safe and unharmful way to uh, keep animals away from your newly started crops especially the carrots and uh, the peas and the lettuce all the stuff that you would feed animals um, another trick for insects and pests uh, if you like color in your garden you can also plant marigolds, the flower, uh, along the border. And naturally, insects uh, don't like the smell or the, uh, or the chemical that these flowers release, so they stay away. It doesn't get rid of them all, but it will definitely help, uh, help manage the problem. So if your garden is not yet prepared, but you want to get an early start on getting your plant ready, um, one of my favorite tricks is to use an old egg carton to uh, start your seeds. So, all you do is go to the bottom and you just make a X amongst each one there. Just so water can move out of the way. And then I would theoretically do that with all of them. 
And then... <clears throat> you can take your egg carton and fill the whole thing up. Kind of, there you go, as so. Then all you really have to do with this is go poke your finger into each one. There's a little rock in there. And then take some seed. And drop them in. <clears throat> now with this method before even burying it burying it I like to directly water the seed the water also helps cover the seed and then I like to take a little dry dirt here and just Put it right on over it. Now you can tell the ones I didn't cut the holes in, but shake that. And with this method, it's easy to transport. You can move it to different places. You can leave it outside. You can leave it by a window. Um, once your garden's ready and these guys are sprouting, all you really have to do is cut this part of the egg carton off um, and then you can cut each segment out individually. And before, when I put those holes in the bottom, that will allow this to biodegrade way faster. It will allow the root system to uh, go directly through it and right into the ground. So if you don't have your garden ready yet, this is a great way to uh, start preparing. How much sunlight does it need when it's inside your house? So you won't need sunlight on these until the two leaves fold out. So that's because those leaves are what's cap capturing the sunlight. Um, so what you'll notice is it's gonna poke through the ground like a little curl, and then after a week or two, it will uh, go straight up and you'll see two little leaves. Um, and that's when you can put it by a window or you can put it on a porch, or you can leave it in a driveway uh, during the day and just take it in during night. Um, this is also a good method uh, for uh, starting your crops before the uh, frost is over. Um, usually you are 100% safe from frost around Memorial Day, um, but you can start planting late April, uh, early May. This is because the seeds are going to be dormant in the soil for a while before they actually have frost danger when they pop through. Um, if there is risk of frost on some of the sensitive crops like the baby tomatoes, the cucumbers are pretty hardy, um, carrots are hardy, uh, peas are hardy, um, but tomatoes you can always cover them at night and uncover them at the morning. You can use a half, half uh, plastic bottle, you can cover them uh, with a tarp, aluminum foil, anything so that the frost doesn't sit on their leaves. And then just take it off right in the morning and it will be like nothing ever happened. <clears throat>